Hello. So, this one's going to be another hitchhiking tale. Um, more about why I left and where I went, as well as um, some of the things that happen on the way. So, <clears throat> by the uh, spring of uh, 98, um, my older siblings had left. Um, my mom actually had left to go to college. Uh, she got some sort of grant thing from uh, NAFTA. When that came through, it, it like... It caused where she worked to uh, be exported. So everybody involved got some sort of a, a grant or something like that. And it allowed her to go back to college. So she went off to college and it was more or less just me and dad. And um, like my sister, um, she was coming and going and doing all kinds of stuff also. Um, but more or less the house was almost like a skeleton of what it, what it was like a year prior, you know. And um, it's more or less, uh, it was just me and dad out there all by ourselves, you know. Um, everybody else seemed to have something to do. Um, I had some real good conversations with dad during those days but that spring he uh he was telling me a story about how you know um, people go and find themselves you know you got to get you got to push yourselves you got to push yourself to an extreme to find out who you are and um i didn't really have nothing else to do so it it had come up to where um i was just going to start walking I was going to take a, a limited amount of supplies and I was just going to walk and see the world, you know. Um, originally, my idea was I wanted to walk all of North and South America. Um, as crazy as that sounds, that was my ambitions. Was I'm going to somehow make my way to a coast and I'm going to follow that coast all the way around until it comes all the way back around, you know, go all the way down and back up South America and all the way up into Alaska on the West Coast, you know. Um, that was my ambitions of walking. Uh, but, so, I had like a backpack, um, you know, fishing string, fire starter. It was your basic, like, outdoors uh, field pack, you know, nothing major. The difference was, is I, I wouldn't have a dog. You know, I was I was just setting out on my own, and um, at first, uh, like back then in the '90s, man, um, especially where we lived, uh, Elvis was kind of a big thing, and um, I wanted to go down towards uh, Memphis, you know, so I headed I headed west and south, and. Um, I was pretty good at walking, man. I, I was making, you know, 30 to 50 miles a day easy just walking. Um, I know that may seem like it's crazy, but, I mean, that's all I really did for quite a while. Um, so it was like, once I started walking, I didn't really get tired or anything. It was just, I had to keep walking. And normally I would, um, I would count, you know, or I would find like a stone and I would I would just kick that stone and I would count the kicks to the stone rather than my footsteps um, you know and I had a stone I, I probably had kicked um, you know 300 miles or more um, when when you get a good stone that when you kick it it kind of rolls straight instead of off to one side or another um, you tend to keep it for a while. And I had that stone for quite a while. 
But um, I wound up going all the way down to like uh, uh, Jackson, Tennessee. Like I'd went around Nashville, um, and and kind of what made me want to start heading back north was the further like south west I went, the more people there seemed to be, and the less like I was I was basically fishing to catch food. Um, fish was my my go-to food source, you know. So. Um, the more people I was running into, uh, the less amount of food I was also finding. And um, I'd gotten, I had gotten into uh, Jackson, just north of Jackson, uh, Tennessee, and uh, there was these signs for uh, the Hatchie National Wildlife Refuge. I got there around like four or five in the afternoon. Um, it was like this open campground area down by the river. It was really thick forest, man. And um, there was like this huge lake, I remember. And I went around to the back side of this lake, and I mean the fishing was good and all that. You know, I, I caught some. I caught some. Uh, some bluegill and and a couple catfish and I had uh, I'd cooked up one of the catfish and I smoked uh, the other like overnight you know and kind of jerkied it down which I know that sounds a little bit gross fish jerky but um, I figured it would it would be a protein source until I got to my next destination and um, when I woke up, there was a, I don't know what they are down there, but it was like a park ranger. And he was ta telling me about vagrancy and all that stuff. Um, it didn't take me that long to get down there, man. I was down there within uh, like four days of leaving. Now, I did have an odor to me, but um, he was he was pretty rude, you know. And from there, I wound up starting to head back north. From where I was, there was there was signs going to another like Hatchie Wildlife thing, and there was signs going to like Chickasaw National Wildlife. Um, so I wound up heading towards the Chickasaw, and I was there, um, you know, by the next by the next evening. And then I wound up just keeping on going north, following the Mississippi. Um, and before I knew it, I was back in Kentucky, and I had made my way all the way back up to, uh, uh, Paducah. I had gotten into Paducah, um, it was nighttime, probably, you know, 10, 10 to 12 at night. I had just come in there, heading up from the south, I think I was on like 45 or something, and, uh, there was like a gas station and stuff I stopped at stopped at on the right and um, you know I was a country boy and this was a lot of concrete and um, long story short um, I wound up getting chased you know I, I woke up to like several several dudes like shaking me and uh, one of them kicked me over and like you know it was a bit abrupt of a wake up <clears throat> so like I jumped up and I pushed one I kicked another I punched one I pushed another and you know I found myself in a brawl there but there was like there was at least a half dozen of these uh, fellas and um, they uh, they started pulling and all that stuff and I wound up just taking off running uh, but they got my backpack uh, and they had ripped my shirt pretty good and I ran and ran and ran and ran and ran and ran and uh, I just thought to run away from lights you know that's all I knew was run away from lights and I started cutting across fields and like jumping fences and all that stuff and like I come across the road I jumped that I kept running just through the night man and uh, I'll end up getting on this road that was just long and straight I probably ran an, an hour uh, 
kind of uncontrolled through the dark and I came out on this pretty wide road it had four lanes so I figured I'd run it you know and um, I was still actually running for the better part of maybe three hours and uh, then I finally had slowed down and started walking and <clears throat> you know the Sun started coming up and all that and that next day man um, I just kept on walking down that road and that's when I found myself in in Hardin Kentucky uh, and um, I hadn't eaten since the the day before and that night I pretty much ran all night and the next day I pretty much walked all day so by the time I got to Hardin um, I was pretty pretty hungry and I was tired and that's where I met that trucker and um, he wound up taking me all the way across the state you know into uh, the Smokies where I had that incident with the bottle and um, after those people had uh, patched me up you know I was there you know four or five days um, there were like I said a lot of important people there um, there was actually two uh, cops one was a sheriff and one was a state patrol um, you know as well as like some other very very important type people and I'm not gonna mention those but the reason I'm bringing up the the state police is uh, he actually gave me a ride because you know they explained where I was before I left I knew where I was in Georgia and they asked me what I was doing you know and I was like I'd really like to see the Smokies I thought I was in the Smokies um, but I was I was like southwest you know from there in Georgia I was down um, near the Chattahoochee Oconee National Forest I don't know if I got that right or not but um, they wound up he gave me a ride um, up into North Carolina uh, all the way up to uh, Cherokee uh, North Carolina uh, it wasn't that far of a, of a drive you know it was about an hour drive hour and a half somewhere in there and uh, you know they had given me another backpack um, they would given me two road flares that if you twisted the top and pulled this thing it, it fired up you know um, emergency road flares um, you know some mirrors um, I'd gotten fishing stuff fishing line fishing hooks um, another backpack pretty much you know back off into the wild I went and I got up there to uh, Cherokee and um, when you get up and around there there's signs for all kinds of places to go see and um, I followed this road that twisted around and went up into the mountains man and uh, it was like the road you take to get to uh, the Smoky Mountains National Park and I'm going up and this road's all twisting around and hugging the rep mountain and all this stuff and I get up to this uh, like it was this waterfall uh, and there's like a, this tourist center and all this stuff man and there's people everywhere and um, I remember uh, you know I got there around like noonish one-ish I walked around and I looked at everything and I was like you know what and I just started walking north from that uh, uh, they had a parking lot there I just went off the back side of that parking lot down that hill and I ran that valley uh, down in that valley there was a there was a little creek when I got to it I ran it up and uh, you could tell I crossed like I don't know if it was an old logging road or whatever you know but after that it was like just raw mountains and so I followed this creek I ran that ridge I followed that creek I ran that ridge night was coming up you know um, I'd been hiking about four or five hours and um, the Sun was, was going down pretty quick it seemed like uh, through the because of the canopy of the woods I was in you know I didn't know where I was at all I just know there wasn't 
any sound of people, no lights from people. There was nothing around me. Um, I had like these ridges that shot up to the west, ridges that shot up to the east. I was down in like this super deep valley. Um, and I had found this little cove where, you know, um, more or less the headwaters of a, of a creek come out. And I figured that's a good spot to make camp. Um, the, the little fish in this creek, uh, they weren't no bigger than maybe like a finger's length. Um, but they were pretty easy to catch. Um, and I had gotten enough of them and, and just cooked them to where I, I'd gotten, uh, I'd filled my belly on these, these fish, man. And I was, I was kicking back, chilling that night, you know, um, had a little campfire and it was, it was several hours after dark and I'm just laying there. Uh, the fire had died down. It was just some coals, you know, I'm laying there taking in the sounds of the night. I was hearing all kinds of stuff I'd never heard before. Um, like I could tell there was additional wildlife on this side of the Appalachians that I just haven't heard uh, coming from the west side of the Appalachians, you know. I'm taking in all these new sounds and, and mixed in with them. Uh, it was like this, this weird uh, snapping chatter. <clears throat> like if you took your teeth and you just smacked them together repeatedly, uh, I can't do it, but... <clears throat> As loud as they were, uh, it almost didn't seem natural because if they were teeth, the, whatever was doing it was doing it extremely hard. Like it would shatter a normal tooth, it seemed like. You know? And I'm hearing these sounds and I'm trying to make out is that is that antler on antler? Um, you know, is that like hooves kicking hooves? You know, what is that sound? And I started hearing these like. At first, I figured them to be some sort of weird uh, coyote, you know, because I didn't really know some of these sounds. So I'm, I'm trying to process what they could be based on what I do know. And um, they were like some weird coyote yips. Um, I'd heard coyotes do all kinds of noises, but these were like um, eerie. Uh, they were strung out instead of just yippy yippy. They, they had like length to the yips. Um. And they really caught my attention because I'm down in this valley where it like it's got mountains that go up on three sides and really the only spot that doesn't have a mountain ridge is where this creek runs out. And um it seemed like these yips were just surrounding me on all sides of, of this canyon I was in. And it actually, it had heightened my senses to where I, I went ahead and kicked out the, uh, the little bit of embers I had for a fire. And I just, I stayed still in the dark as, as these yips and, and tooth chatter sounds slowly like surrounded me on the ridges and started coming down into the valley and I'm laying there and like dude I was I was I don't mean to get religious or anything but when you find yourself in this scenario you'd be surprised who you start asking um, to help uh, because of what you're in so um, I'm in this valley of darkness and screams more or less just praying and I'm laying there and I'm listening and and it seemed like all that there was left in the sound of night was the yips and tooth chatter like they even shut the crickets up and everything and I'm just laying there still as as I'm laying there staying as still as possible um, and what I did is I, I took one of those flares, um, that I had been given. I had my backpack on and everything, and I'm laying there. The forest had gotten quiet, 
and all you heard was like these weird coyote yips and screams and tooth chatter and they kept getting closer and closer and then all of a sudden it all stopped you just heard like silence and um, you heard like the creek you know water over rocks type sound but aside from that there was nothing in those woods and I'm laying there and I got the flare in my hands and uh, I heard a stick snap behind me and I started hearing it sounded like I don't know like it was a foreign language uh, I couldn't really tell you what dialect or accent or anything but it was not English and there weren't many words involved it was like this weird broken English uh, grunting sound and dude that sent like chills down uh, I'd say down my spine but it that's not deep enough it sent chills down my my stomach you know and I bet I turned as white as a ghost when I heard what I figured to be like talking and uh, then another stick broke and I had so many goosebumps I bet I was I was kind of floating on my hair at this moment you know laying there and you know it, it's just the darkest of night and under the canopy you know there was no moonlight or nothing and out of the darkness I felt pressure on my shoulder and the moment I felt like pressure on my shoulder like something that grabbed me I screamed and I ripped that cap off that flare and so I figured when I pull the cap off I'm gonna keep my eyes closed so it doesn't blind me so that's really why I don't have much of a description of whatever these things were um, because when I first ripped the flare open you know my eyes were shut and I'm screaming and I shoved this thing you know over my left shoulder where I was grabbed from and I know I hit something with that flare and it let out the deepest scream like it was it was uh, it was nauseating it was so scary um, and I dropped that flare there and I just jumped up and I took off running dude and I ran up that hill and I'm running and I'm running and I'm running I probably ran um, I don't know two three hundred yards before I stopped behind a tree and I just start listening and you can hear like there was once again that weird extended coyote yipping and and yapping and calling and screaming and um, they were down in the valley whatever they were and I just dude I just turned around and I kept running and running and I come up on this like path um, all of a sudden it wasn't like a road or anything it was like a footpath and I made a right on it and I'm just running as fast as my feet could carry me and um, I was a pretty fast runner um, uh, it was my preferred mode of transportation to be honest um, so I'm running I'm running and you could see up ahead on this path this fire watch tower it didn't have no lights on it but you could tell that's what it was you know it was kind of standing out against uh, the horizon um, against the night sky you know I ran and I ran and I ran and I jumped over the uh, like the gate at the bottom of the steps and I just ran up that tower all the way up to the top and I I jumped up on top uh, the railing and I actually got up on the roof and I just laid there and I could hear these things all through uh, those woods that night, dude. Um, it, it sounded like they were just running all around this fire tower at the base through the woods, like just kicking leaves and throwing branches and doing these yips and screams and this, dude, the, the tooth chatter. If, if, it was just so loud it was like these things had huge uh, teeth um, it wasn't necessarily like they were snapping it was like they were they were biting down and then rubbing them together and making this kind of like uh, 
almost a woodsy type sound, but it was, you could tell it was teeth. But it was just so loud. Um, the teeth had to be made to do this, you know. So I'm up in here and I couldn't tell you how long all this happened. Um, uh, you know, with that much adrenaline, seconds seemed like minutes. And I stayed on that roof. None of them ever came up the stairs or anything. But I was on the roof of that fire tower um, till the sun come up. And, you know, I didn't hear anything moving around anymore down in the woods. Um, everything had left. And I had passed out from exhaustion. Um, and so the next you know I woke up I get off the roof and I get down off the tower and uh, you know I was I was pretty hungry that was a adrenaline dunk so I just keep heading north you know and um, I find this I find this other trail <clears throat> and I follow this trail up this ridge and around that ridge and up and I just keep going further north and further north and further north I came upon this ridge and this valley looked this valley just looked so appealing dude um, I'd come up on this ridge and it was like marked uh, it was like Mount G it was some sort of a G I, I remember that and um I went down down that ridge and there was this creek and I followed that creek it kind of went to the west um, and I followed it until they come up on these uh, like these waterfalls and um, dude I those waterfalls were so nice you know I chilled there I took a I bathed you know I cleaned up uh, the fishing was good uh, they had like these little fish that looked like trout, but I mean they were about uh, you know eight ten inches long. Um, they were real sweet eating. They were real sweet. Um, but I stayed there like a day. Uh, other than how beautiful it was and the fish were good, um, there there really isn't much to say about that. Other than it was just absolutely gorgeous. Um, and the the prior night was it made this night and, and this place just so so awesome you know <clears throat> and the next day I was all rested up I had slept nice and good um, uneventful well fed I started heading north again man and that was a that was a pretty steep climb north away from those uh, those falls um, and once I got over the other ridge, once again, there's another, another river. And, um, I followed this, this river just ran straight north, you know, before long, you know, I started smelling like campgrounds and all that. And I'd come out on this, this highway, uh, the river ran straight underneath the highway, but I went ahead and I walked up and got on, on the road and, um, I followed that road a little bit to the east and I wound up coming out um, it was like highway 40 interstate 40 was right there uh, I'm trying to remember the name of this it wasn't nothing to it it was just this road met that road and you know it had a gas station and I had stopped at that gas station you know I used the restroom I was trying to figure out where I was, you know, and, and where to go next. Um, it was beautiful, just mountains in all directions. And uh, this this big rig rolled up in there, you know. A dude seen me sitting out front when he was going in. He, when he came out, he, he started, he asked me if I was from around there. And I was like, nah, man, I, I kind of, I'm just wandering, you know. And, so he asked me, you know, where I've been and what I was doing, and you know, he said he'd give me a ride if I if I wanted it, you know. And I was like, well, 
cool. You know, he said I could talk to him, keep him awake. He's got a long haul ahead of him. Um, you know, I figured what the hey, this dude seemed legit, and this was a free ride, and I'll figure out where I'm going once he says, uh, you know, I can't go no further. <clears throat> so I got in the cab, man, and I don't know, like that first half a day. Uh, everything went good you know we're talking about this and that and like he he explained how he he grew up in West Virginia and all this stuff and um, we had stopped for uh, Taco Bell somewhere in Knoxville I was like I remember we ate the Taco Bell uh, he went in and got it you know I sat in the truck and um, we ate the Taco Bell and I started feeling really tired dude really tired and it was it was a bit odd because um it really wasn't time for me to even get tired you know but i i remember we stopped for taco bell and i remember the sensation of feeling tired and the next thing i remember is um i i was waking up and i heard him talking on the cb and he wasn't even talking english he was talking like French or something and uh okay so he's talking French or something and like I I didn't want to let him know I was awake you know I didn't know how long I was even asleep uh, but there was like part of me that didn't want to let him know I was awake I, I sat there you know acting like I was asleep for about a half an hour or so and I don't know what he was saying because it was in French, but I, I noticed we were slowing down and he had pulled off. And we were at like this rest area. And it's like pitch black outside. And there's like these lights that are along uh, this little pull off of a rest area. This other car had pulled up. Um, it was like a little brown uh, like Buick or something or another. And the dude had gotten out and he had walked around and him and this other person were talking and they started walking towards the back of the truck and when they did I like I grabbed my backpack I felt really weird dude but I I opened that door and I jumped to the ground and like my legs were all wobbly and uh, I just I felt like I was drunk is what I felt like but everything sounded weird too um, like there was like almost this uh, wow, wow, wow type sound going on in my ears, you know, and like it was hard to figure out where the horizon was when I jumped out of the truck. <clears throat> I was very disoriented. But once I jumped out of the truck, they started yelling in French. And I just took off running once again, dude. Um, wherever this was, there was a huge storm going on way out in the distance and it just looked like an ocean you know you could just see forever and it was all flat looking um and i see you know there's lightning strikes kind of you know lighten up only the distance but it kind of lit up where you were you know and i'm running as hard as i can in this and i got these people behind me yelling and then i heard a gunshot <clears throat> and when i heard that gunshot i jumped you know and um, I remember I felt like this little nick in my wrist and I was I thought I had been shot you know so I grabbed my wrist and like I rolled on the ground after I had jumped you know and I, I stumbled back up and I took off running again and I hadn't taken but maybe another uh, 10 steps and like the ground just gave away from me <clears throat> and next thing you know I'm sliding and like my chest still hurt and the back of my head was pounding you know and I'm sliding down this I don't know what it was um, but I'm, I'm like sliding down it and rolling and falling and I could feel like you know rocks are hitting my shoulders and rocks are hitting my elbow and rocks are hitting my butt and I'm, I'm just flipping and rolling and I came to a stop and it felt like somebody threw me in a huge dryer for like an hour on tumble mode 
and then just pulled me out and threw me down on the ground um, and I, I'm laying there and I'm looking up and like the night sky was just completely peppered with stars um, wherever he had taken me there was no other light source except the stars once I fell down into that valley and so the storm's getting louder and um, I'm, I'm kind of I'm slowly like my neck hurt my head hurt my chest hurt my elbows hurt I think I'm shot in the wrist so I'm like I'm moaning and groaning but trying to do it quietly because I feel like I'm being chased and I'm running for my life you know and uh, I feel my wrist and you know it's sticky but there's only like a little nick in it you know and it's right at my thumb and uh and I move my thumb so everything's working I'm like well or the bullet went all the way through is what I'm thinking and I, I sit up you know and I hear him up top um and so I'm looking back up and I had fallen down uh probably like 70 80 feet of this like uh kind of like a kind of like this eroded rock um and they're up on top of this like rock looking down and I can I can make them out from the the distant lightning strikes and I can hear them and they're still talking French and I'm like I roll over to the side you know and um, they shot two more times like bang bang down towards me um, but I don't think they saw me because uh, I heard the bullets ricochet and there was nowhere near me you know but the, the gunfire scared the scared the tar out of me man so I kind of stumble stumbled to my my feet again and I kind of just wobble stumble down this this runoff valley thing through these rocks and um, so I'm wobbling around and I'm, I'm still trying to shake off whatever uh, whatever I had been given to make me go to sleep I could still feel like the effects of it now I don't know if maybe I also hit my head while I was going down falling down that uh, ravine but like I felt like I was on almost some psychedelic uh, um, effects you know um, I'm looking around and like the the sky was just so white bright and orange and like <clears throat> the lightning strikes gave like everything this strobe looking effect and wherever I was all the rocks had like this layered pattern to them of whites and reds and they just uh, the jagged shards of earth just rose up all around me in the darkness and night and I'm stumbling through these ravines of rocks and like I don't know it was it was a very uh, disorienting effect and that storm come rolling through it took it about an hour and a half two hours before it was there but once it's, it rolled through the the wind in front of it was just it was so windy dude um, I just huckered down and, and the wind blew through and then the rain rolled through and it was a cold rain and there was no sticks for me to rub. There was nothing for me to do nothing with. Um, it was like a desolate, dry uh, environment. I, I couldn't get a fire going to get warm or nothing, dude. Um, at one point, I figured I'd use the flare, you know. But I wound up, I, I kind of just curled up uh, next to this rock that was blocking the wind because the wind was coming out of the north northwest and it was cold and, uh, so I found this little cubby <clears throat> and I'm tucked down in it and I'm just shivering you know and like I can't make sense of nothing uh, there ain't nothing but a, like the winds howling lightnings crashing thunder clapping uh, I'm soaked I'm shivering and I can't warm up for nothing and so I'm kind of curled up there in the fetus position and I heard like this this snort you 
time. And it, it petrified me. Whatever made the snort, it was like, I'm laying on the ground and uh, I could feel like something was walking, something big and heavy was walking. And I'm laying there and it was, I heard it step and I heard it step and I heard it step and uh, it had actually petrified me. And so I'm shivering in this rain and lightning laying curled up in the fetus position and all of a sudden something just lays down behind me. Uh, and I remember feeling like pressure from whatever it was like I was so scared, I didn't even look. It felt like a giant cow just laid down behind me. And its fur was on my back and on my legs. I started to warm up there in the rain. Um, and I don't know why, but I was so scared, I was petrified, but yet I this when I felt the warmth, there was like this overall calm that just kind of washed over me. And, um, I just went straight to sleep. I, I guess I had passed out. Because next thing you know, um, I'm waking up. And it's, it's brutally hot. Um, and whatever was laying against me, it stood up. And it woke me up. And I, I open my eyes, and I know it's daytime, and I see these white rocks. Everywhere is just these white rocks with stripes on them, is what I open my eyes to. And, like, whatever stood up, I heard it do, like, this snort, and it started walking away. And, um, it, ta it took maybe six or seven steps, and, like, I decided to roll over. And I slowly ro rolled my head over and looked off uh, behind me, you know. And this giant uh, white buffalo uh, turned around and like it snorted at me again and uh, started walking away. And I was like, when I saw the size of this thing, it was my first time ever seeing a buffalo or a bison and uh, its head was so huge um i bet its nose was as wide as if i put both my fists together uh that's how wide this thing's nose was um if i went to hug its head i, I probably couldn't even reach around how big its head was it was just a huge uh bison and seeing it in person uh it really um I don't know the right word, it, it, it was sterilizing, um, like, it was the only thing that existed when we made eye contact, is what I'm, what it feels like, you know what I mean, um, like, where I was, or and who I was, nothing else mattered, except staring at this, uh, white bison, and it, like, it did another snort like I said and it turned and it just walked away it, it walked around the corner and off into the I was in like the this maze of ravines um, with shards of rocks everywhere and um, it was like this white and red and yellow striped world of uh, I felt like I was on another planet you know um, and I looked at my hand now, you know, because I, I thought I was shot in the wrist. And what had happened, I guess, is uh, either the bullet or a shard of rock that the bullet ricocheted off of had shot straight through my uh, my right wrist. And it had ripped a pretty good chunk of skin. Um, but it was like if somebody took a, a bottle cap and just kind of like ripped it across the wrist right there. It was um, it was less than a half an inch from hitting all those veins right there in the wrist, but 
Um, it really wasn't that bad of a wound. It was just a big chunk of skin missing. Uh, so I wound up, I wrapped that up, you know, and I'm feeling my, my chest and head and, and like, uh, my head hadn't really, my head had a little bit of weeping, but it hadn't broken back open, you know, and my chest was okay, but my elbow was a little bit, a little bit nicked up, you know, so I'm kind of like trying to survey my body and figure out how bad I was beat up and take in where I am and like I basically I'm on like another planet you know and like the smell I had never seen or smelled or anything like this man and uh, it was like I said a whole nother world and uh <clears throat> so it, it was maybe 15 minutes before I could even I even gathered myself up enough to stand up and when I did uh like as soon as I stood up I heard rattlesnakes like one over here one over there one over there there was rattlesnakes all around me dude it was like I, there's no sticks either you know so but there was plenty of little rocks so what I did is I wound up getting like handfuls of these little rocks and whenever I would come up upon uh, a rattlesnake doing its thing I'd start chucking little rocks at it until it you know scurried off slithered off and left me alone um, and it took me it took me a while to find my way out of these deep ravines and stuff and uh, it like opened up into this huge open plains and it looked like it was just emptiness in all directions I was wondering where I had even been taken uh, since he was speaking French I figured maybe I was somewhere in Canada, but it seemed kind of hot to be Canada, you know. <clears throat> so I just kept walking south across these these wide open plains, and there was like <laughs> there was prairie dogs uh, barking and whistling and running all around. But uh, the thing I remember the most is how many of these uh, like white and black rattlesnakes. There was white and black rattlesnakes everywhere. Um, and I walked south until I come up on this road and I figured okay I'm gonna head west on the road and I, I just started walking west on the road and a card went by and another card went by and another card went by and I, I saw a sign out in the distance and it took me about you know 15 minutes before I had walked far enough to see it and uh, it was it was a sign for like Badlands National Park and I was coming up on like uh, scenic or, or uh, science or something like that I can't remember man but um, I came into this little town and uh, I was so thirsty dude and it it was like it was evening time you know sunset going down the sky is all lit up everything that whole area just looks so surreal um, and they had like uh, it almost was like a reservation type town um, but they wound up I, I got some some food and water there were some nice people there um, I explained you know this guy tried to do this with me and I wound up doing this and this and uh, they wanted me to to report it and all this other stuff and I didn't have any ID you know um, and I didn't I didn't want to deal with any authorities uh, so they kind of spooked me to the point where you know I I took off out of there <clears throat> and uh, I, I you know I told him thank you for this and that and uh, I left out of there and uh i think i think that there i think i'll end it right there you know hello just wanted to say thanks for um all the thumbs up and comments and new subs uh pretty cool um it really helps with the uh, the algorithms so just wanted to say thank you 
so I'm working on getting Patreon up and going, and um, I, I want to say thank you to my Patreon members. Uh, you guys are awesome, <laughs> so thank you, and this part is for my Patreon members. Uh, I appreciate you.